Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Annie and this is Historically Fashioned. So today I'm going to do my first walk through or flip through of one of my antique delineator magazines. So I have quite a, a collection of these magazines, but um, I did notice while looking through that collection that I do have some holes and some months where I actually don't have even one uh, publication from that month. So I decided the way I would do this was to start with my oldest complete magazine and go from there. I do have a few magazines that are not complete, so I may go through those at the end, but I thought why not start with the complete ones? So the magazine we're going to be looking at today is The Delineator from December of 1882. Um, we will be doing a flip through of the complete magazine. So uh, we'll get started with that in just a minute. Before we do, I did want to give a little back on these magazines. So Delineator Magazine is uh, or was a monthly uh, women's magazine that was published by the Butterick Publishing Company. It was originally published in 1869 under the name um, Metropolitan Monthly and then in 1875 the name was changed to the Delineator Magazine. It was published through the rest of the 19th century into the early 20th, early 20th century, stopped publication, I believe, in uh, 1937. Yes, 1937 was the last publication uh, for this magazine. In the 20s and 30s, they did also publish a quarterly magazine. I don't actually have any of those because those are kind of outside my period. I much prefer the Victorian Edwardian eras, so those are the ones that I collect and those are the ones I focus on. Um, another note before we get started, I want to remind everybody that this is indeed a period publication. It was published in the 1800s. Their views uh, on some things are definitely not our modern views and they don't, uh, they don't mesh well at all. So sometimes in these magazines you will find things that we would consider highly inappropriate and highly disturbing specifically some of the advertisements dealing with size and weight issues uh, can be a, a problem. There is no representation of people of color nor LGBTQ plus people. Um, we know obviously that all types of people have existed through forever since humans crawled out of the, you know, primordial ooze, um, but they are not at all represented in these magazines. These are just purely going to be showing basically thin white white women. That's what's going to be shown in these magazines. Um, it is unfortunate, it is a product of the time, but I will be going through these magazines in their entirety and I did want to warn you that sometimes things can get a little ugly, frankly. Um, as many people like to say, I'm not sure who came up with the phrase originally, but it is Victorian style, not Victorian values on this channel. Uh, so with all of that said, let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at this magazine, shall we? Okay, so here we are looking at the front cover of the Delineator magazine from December of 1882. You can see uh, that it was 15 cents when it was first published. Let's go ahead and open this up and get started. Okay, so the first thing you can see is a full, full page ad here for C.J. Gunther and Sons, established 1820. Uh, they were on number 184 Fifth Avenue on Broadway and 23rd Street in New York. Uh, according to this ad, it looks like they sold fine goods, including furs, satins, uh, let's see, brocades, velvets, plushes, at low price with superior quality. So there we go, all kinds of furs, muffs, collars, pelerines, all kinds of good fun things, um, supposed to be high quality, even blankets. The first pages of these magazines are usually telling you what is going on in that particular season. So here you can see it says a monthly magazine, Metropolitan Fashion Fashions, and uh, they're telling you the seasonable styles for December of 1882. 
it goes over all the relevant fashions for the ladies. We're talking about dominoes and masks for parties. So there is actually, I believe, a um, pattern for both a domino and a mask. So that's interesting. We'll be able to see that. Um, and you can see that, yes, again, it is 15 cents or uh, let's see, eight and a half pence yearly. It is one dollar. There you go. So there we go. Uh, first pages, we continue on and then we have our first fashion plates. Now, these older volumes do not have any colorized uh, fashion plates. So these are all going to be black and white in these older volumes. Um, the first thing we're seeing here is the figure of a lady's promenade toilette. And you can see if you want a description of this, you actually have to go to page 336. So I always think that's interesting that they don't have the description right on the same page and you have to do a little bit of flipping around. Um, so yes, here you have a lady's toilette for promenading. I guess she's got a nice warm uh, over overdress or coat on there. Keep her nice and warm. Looks like it's trimmed with um, maybe some box pleats of some variety, some fancy pleating. They did love their pleats in the Victorian era. And of course, she's got a nice hat with some ostrich feathers. Here we have a lady in her at-home toilette and another lady who is visiting her in her visiting toilette. And it looks like she's got a little like muff there to keep her little hands warm. I do love the pleating on these skirts. They're so, so beautiful. This looks like it's probably some kind of velvet maybe with some kind of appliques. Absolutely gorgeous stuff. Then next one is a lady's street costume. She's got a little jaunty little hat, definitely a little fur muff there. And here is her like jacket style thing happening with her cute little skirt peeking out the back. And here you can see really, it's pretty much all the same lady. She looks the same in all of the pictures. Uh, this is another lady's toilette. I do love this on the back, this detailing with this. I don't know if it's a, an applique or a pin or what's going on there. It's really pretty. Uh, again, we have a lady's Polonaise costume. I absolutely love this detailing on the, co the cuff and the fabric is gorgeous. It looks like some fancy silk brocade. And look at that pleat. I'm not a huge fan of pleats like that. That's just me. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I do love the soutache on this lady's costume here. This is absolutely stunning and it's, it's complicated yet simple at the same time. This soutache is, is amazing. I have actually a, um, attachment for my treadle machine. At some point, I would like to try to figure out how to use it and see if I can apply some soutache braiding because I love the look of it. I'm just too lazy to sew it on by hand. This has gotten a little crinkled in the intervening years. So here we have, again, a front view of a lady's costume and also the back view. Back view. Back view. Again, we see this great swagging here with a looks like a buckle there in the back. I do love the way the back looks. I'm not a huge fan of that in the front. I don't. I don't know. It looks like you've got a butterfly just kind of sitting right there. So I don't know. That's just me. Um, this is a lady's redding goat. That looks very much like uh, what the lady was wearing in the very first fashion plate that we saw. This is pattern number 8378. Again, I love the simplicity of the cut um, and I love the pleating in the back. I think it's so beautiful and I can't even imagine how long that trim took to make. Oh my gosh. So here we see a domino and the mask. So we've got the domino with a hood here, and then here she is wearing her little mask. It looks like we could maybe make use of those today. Hmm. I don't know, maybe I should make one. So this one I'm a little bit more interested in. So to see more, it says to see page 341. So I'm just gonna kind of skip ahead of it, or maybe we'll get there in just a second, it's the next page. So yeah, it looks like it's fairly loose fitting. Maybe satin is what I would I would guess. Um, I too, again, I love the mask. I mean, can you imagine? Oh my God. Too bad I didn't see that earlier on. That would have been incredible. 
um, worn over obviously a surgical mask or an N95 mask, but yes, please. This is a ladies wrap. Again, I love the simple cut. I love the sleeves on this. I think that's beautiful and it looks like it's trimmed in fur. Um, not my jam, but um, I know some people do make use of uh, antique furs or vintage furs. Um, I don't really have a problem with that, but you know, uh, I love this, the, the braiding here on the back too. It's quite pretty. So let's go ahead and see what it says about this domino. Um, it's over here, 341. Domino and mask. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's quite a lot. But it says, a want that is always emphasized by the recurrence of any gay season is fully met by the pu this publication of, oh, excuse me, is fully met by the publication of these two patterns. The material used for the domino is undressed cambric, and the construction is so planned as to make the garment entirely envelop the costume and with the aid of the mask afford complete disguise. Now, why would you want to disguise yourself completely, I wonder? Hmm. Mm -hmm. The fronts of the domino are like those of a long, loose robe, and the right side is turned under in a hem. So it just goes on to, to describe the kind of like the construction methods, which I always find interesting when you are trying to reconstruct one of these things. Um, it's nice to have these descriptions to kind of help guide you, because what I have found in most of my like older pattern books, there is not much when it comes to construction detail. So I do like that we have those. Um, here we have both a front and back view of a lady's wrap. Again, I absolutely love the sleeves on this. I think it's so, so pretty. Uh, these closures are quite cute as well. Another lady's wrap, front and back view. And I love the little butt bow. I mean, who doesn't love a butt bow? So cute. Next up, we have a ladies polonaise, front and back view, very military inspired, quite pretty. I love this back, so beautiful. And here we just have a very simple ladies coat and it looks like it's out of some kind of plaid material. Very nice. It says that it is, coats are among the prevailing fashion in street garments and one of the most stylish modes for their construction is represented by these engravings. The material is illustrated as fancy cloth with the decorative accessories, oh, and the decorative accessories are velvet. Fancy cloth, okay. All right, it is very fancy cloth. I will give it that. Here we have another jacket, front view, back view, and yet another one. Again, we see the soutache braiding. We see these frog closures, super cute. More jackets. Uh, these are ladies' basques. I absolutely love the way this is cut with the tabs. Super, super adorable. Very pointed waist on this basque. This is a very simple bodice that you can take and then change to your, um, your liking. Basically, you can decorate it any way you want with something that simple. I love that they have these just like we do today. And a lot of times, like when you look at the old drafting manuals, it will give you kind of instructions to basically kind of like flat pattern all of these things. And then use your basic block uh, bodice to turn it into many different styles, just like we do today. I, I, I just love it. Um, here we have some skirt styles. We have the uh, right side front view and the left side back view of the same skirt. Again, we have this kind of ruched detail with the swagging going over. Um, again, I'm not sure that this is my favorite, but I do love this skirt. And again, I can only imagine how long it took to pleat all that and how much fabric that took. Holy moly. Um, here again, we have another skirt. I love the combination of fabrics in this one. Uh, this is a walking skirt. This was also a walking skirt. I love the back draperies and I much prefer, I guess, this kind of drapery than I do to this kind of ruched one. Here we have a ladies overskirt. So to go over your regular walking skirt, we have our side front and our side back view. Um, it looks like maybe some 
tux or maybe some pleating here. Not pleating, what am I trying to say? Um, I'm gonna guess it's like an applied decoration. I can't imagine doing tux on this curved, this curved side. So here again, we have another walking skirt. I do love this detailing here. I think that's super cute. And I do love the pleated ruffle at the bottom. Very nice, really like that. So that's kind of it on the ladies stuff. And now we're going into misses and girls. So this is older girls. So preteen, um, teenage girls, you know, to a probably about 16 or so. And you can see it's basically the same styles that the adults would wear only a little bit shorter. Um, so here we have an outdoor toilette. She's wearing a very cute hat. She's got her little parasol umbrella happening there. You'll notice it's quite long. Here we have a Mrs. costume. I love this skirt. I think that this is so cute. Again, not a huge fan of that kind of drapery, but um, the whole effect I think is adorable. Here she is with another Mrs. Street costume and you'll see it's the same girl. She has quite a, quite a wardrobe for sure. This is just a very simple outdoor uh, costume. Here we have another Mrs. costume with a cute hat. I like the tux here on the front and another Mrs. Toilette. Very cute. I just, I don't know, I have a thing for bows around the neck and on the booties, very cute. This one I absolutely adore. This is a Mrs. dress. I think this is so cute. Um, let's see, so this one is uh, figure number six consisting of Mrs. dress number 8414, which is shown as made of other goods on page 356 of this publication. This pretty style of dress is sometimes called the Esmeralda and is a very popular fashion for young people. The yoke and sleeves are made of stripes of insertion sewed neatly together, while the dress portion and puffs are of terracotta cashmere. Oh, I bet that's delightful. The yoke is deep and square and fits smoothly, its neck being finished with a standing collar having rounding, uh, rounding front ends. I love this. So it looks like they've taken insertion lace and seamed it all together and then made the sleeves and the yoke out of it. Oh my gosh, so pretty. And then it's got these puffs on the sleeves as well. Oh heavens, so beautiful, so beautiful. Um, here we are getting into, it looks like little little girls. This is a much younger girl. Um, and she is wearing just a girl's costume. I love the pocket on this one and I adore her hat. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. You can see this is shorter. And look at these socks. Holy cow. Maybe they're leggings. I don't know. Absolutely cute. Um, so these are obviously younger girls, but they, um, are, are titled specifically for girls. You'll notice as you get into the, the even younger set from, you know, little, little tiny babies up until probably about six years old or so, a six to eight, um, that it is just a neutral gender, which I love. Um, so yeah, so there's some little girls happening here. This illustration just cracks me up because it is just like so many little girls I have known in my life. Uh, she has got her hat on her tuchus. I mean, that is so cute, so cute. I've known little girls like that who would do exactly that thing. Um, again, very cute socks. Here we have a front and back view of the same costume. Again, front and back view of the same costume. This is super cute. It's a girl's cloak. I think this must be a pocket, but I am not 100% sure. Looks like a pocket to me, very cute. Here we have a Mrs. Dress. This reminds me, um, well, not reminds me, this is something that I feel like would be taken directly, you know, like the 70s would have looked at that and gone, yes, please make it my size. 
very cute. I can imagine super like comfy to waltz around in even as an adult um, just because it's so loose and comfortable. Probably great for the summertime. Uh, this is a girl's costume again with the soutache braiding. Super, super cute. I love the detailing on this polonaise. Absolutely adorable. This is like that first uh, redding goat we saw um, in the very beginning for the women, but in girl size. Here we have another little girl's costume. This looks like one we saw earlier as well. Front and back view and then Mrs. Jackets, front and back views of those. And girl's coats. Again, great little patch pocket there. Here we have a night dress, front view and back view. And a Mrs. Walking Skirt. Again, I love this detailing. I love these. Oh my gosh, so pretty. And look at the underside of the fabric. Oh, gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Now we're getting into styles for little folks. And you'll notice that these are the ones that are not gendered, which I think is fantastic. And I think we should bring this back. Um, where all children, regardless of uh, gender assigned at birth, wear the same kinds of clothing until they are old enough to decide for themselves what they are comfortable in. So you can see this super cute little hat. I absolutely love this little overcoat. The embroidery details or applique details on there are absolutely beautiful. Here we have another little child's costume. It's got a little cape, super cute hat, absolutely, absolutely adorable. Again, with that great pocket. This one, I love. I just love it. I don't know what it is about it, but yes, please. So, so stinking cute. Um, and here's another child's costume. And then we have a child's first short dress. Very much like that other one we saw for the young misses, um, but much tinier. A child's cloak with a cape. So cute. Can you imagine just seeing all the little kids running around and things like this? Ah, too much for me. Child's costume. I love the little fez there. So adorable on this child. So, so adorable. And I just love the vest here or faux vest. I'm not sure if it's multiple pieces or what, but I love it. Here we have a child's dress as well. I don't know, this child looks very strange to me. I don't, I don't know. Here we have that little Turkish cap is what they're calling it. And there's the child's coat. This is over here, infant's pinning blanket. So we have things very similar to that today. And this infant's button boot. Oh my God, I, I can only wish that my daughter had those when she was little, holy cow. Uh, infant's house sack. Um, this is styles for dolls now. So they are going to talk about um, doll clothing as well. You can buy, could buy uh, patterns for doll clothing. So um, yeah, that's fun. But it looks like this is actually an, for, for an infant. But now we're gonna get into dolls. So this is a lady doll's bridal toilette. You can make your doll a very, very, beautiful and fancy uh, bridal gown. Here we have a baby doll costume and another lady doll costume and a child's girl's doll costume. So I guess if you do not have a full grown doll and you have a child doll, there, there's a costume for her. There is even a pattern for dolls. So I guess you would purchase the head and the arm, uh, hands and legs, maybe even the entire arms. I'm not 100% sure. Um, and then you would attach those to the body that you sewed up. Very, very cute. Here we have some more dolls clothes. Um, we've got a wrap and a trained princess dress. Here we have a mother Hubbard dress and cap and a walking skirt and coat ensemble. And then we have, what is this? Uh, consisting of a cloak, cape, and robe. There you go. Cloak, cap, and robe. Excuse me, I cannot read. Womanly courtesy. Now these articles sometimes just crack me up. You're like, who the heck wrote this? 
Um, so this one is about, it's just a short little article about womanly courtesy and I guess how to be courteous as a woman. Um, so yeah, there is a quote here from a quite misogynistic poet who said, the, uh, the men have many faults, but women have but two. There's nothing good they say and nothing good they do. I don't know who that poet was, but I think I don't like him. So then it goes on to talk about how uh, women have long since proved him wrong, um, but we must work on it. We must work on it. Yes, we must do that. So there's that little article there, super fun or not. And then we're talking about hats and all kinds of other things. So as you probably know, there was quite a fashion for whole birds on hats uh, during the Victorian era. This led to the mass extinction of some varieties of birds, which is very, very sad. Uh, so yes, we have quite a few hats here with entire birds on them. Um, and then this round hat with some ostrich feathers. I do love the bows though, I think, and I love the shapes of these hats, but I don't wish to have an entire bird on my, on my chapeau. Um, I love this one. I, I just, I just do. I think it's like a little capote hat and I just really, I really love this one. Um, I think all three of these are actually pretty darn cute. Um, here's some handkerchiefs, kind of showing you some handkerchiefs of the day. These are stylish handkerchiefs. So you have one of these in your pocket. You're a stylish lady. I don't know if anyone else has an obsession with uh, vintage and antique handkerchiefs, but I have actually quite a collection. I enjoy collecting them and most of them are in good enough condition um, that I actually use them. I actually have some that are new old stock. I washed them up, um, pressed them, and I actually use them, carry around one in my pocket all the time. Here we have a ribbon and lace jabot, which I need to make more jabots. I do not have nearly enough. I actually only have two and one is Christmas themed. So I need to get on the, the, the ball here and make some more jabots and collars and such. So this one's quite fancy. Then we have a little fichu, which is gorgeous, made out of mull, it looks like. Absolutely beautiful. I'd like to make a couple of those as well for, you know, whenever. Um, and then we have a fancy collar. I love that as well. Here we have some, a braid pattern that you can use for adding onto your bodices. More braid patterns here for your skirts. This is showing you how to like, you know, trim your skirts. Here we have a fichu decoration for a waist. So it looks like this is actually, um, I, I think probably attached to the waist. Love this fabric. Um, and then trimmings for your bottom of your skirt. Again, I love that fabric. I think it's absolutely beautiful. And then we have a decoration for the front gore of your skirt. Um, and then the rest would be covered by your overskirt, I guess. Um, and you wouldn't need to decorate it. So it's a nice way to save on decorations, which are very expensive. Here we have some flounce patterns. So we have just a fan flounce, a triple plated flounce, um, a lace flounce, this is so pretty, and a fancy skirt trimming. This, ah, oh, I love the lace around the edge. I love the way it's pleated. Oh my gosh, gorgeous. Here we have some braid decorations and just some sleeve decorations in general. Um, contrasting plating, so I guess you would make this out of a different fabric than what your skirt is made out of. Again, another fancy sleeve finish here. Love the cute little bow. Some fancy flounces down here. That is super fancy. Um, let's see, so uh, this looks like embroider and embroidery design for uh, whatever you'd like to put that on. Here's another embroidery design. Then we have some gentlemen's robes here. So we have a double-breasted house jacket um, in different lengths. Single-breasted and I guess double-breasted here. So here are some gentlemen's handkerchiefs, much more, um, uh, what am I trying, geometric designs than on the women's handkerchiefs. Here's a gentleman's knotted scarf and another gentleman's robe. 
These are little ideas that you can make for people for Christmas. There's a very cute little pin cushion there. Um, and then we have decorated cigar box, a needle book, and a fancy muff. This is too stinking cute for me. This is a thimble case and it actually gives you the pattern for the thimble case. I think I'm going to make this um, and film it here and probably provide the pattern. So if you'd like to make your own little slipper thimble case, you can. I adore it. I think it's so cute and I think I need one in my life for my thimble. Absolutely cute. Here is an old Mother Hubbard pin cushion. <laughs> I would love to have the pattern for that because who doesn't want a pin cushion that looks like that? Too cute. Here we have a decorated ottoman and a fancy tidy. I'm not 100% sure what a fancy tidy is. I might have to look into that. Maybe it goes on your desk. Maybe you hang it on your wall and put things on it. I'm I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but it's it's pretty. Um, here we have an umbrella case. It holds, looks like two umbrellas. Uh, very fancy embroidery design there. Um, and then you can make this grape sachet. I guess you would fill that with some lavender or um, some other sweet smelling things and put that in your drawer or a closet. Um, shows you how to make the little grapes. Super cute. Um, then we've got some descriptions of fashionable trimmings and winter millinery, uh, fashionable furs, and then answers to correspondence. So this is where people have uh, written in with questions and they've answered them. And I always think it's funny because they don't actually include the question, so you have no idea what the person asked. You just see the answer to the question. So uh, for Gladys here, she wanted to know something, I don't know, something about dark terracotta. So it says dark terracotta would look well on one having a fair complexion, brown hair, and gray eyes, though the lighter shades had better be avoided. Cashmere of the darkest tone of this color, made up by costume number 8404. Price is one shilling. I don't know what D stands for or 49 cents. Um, would be suitable and pretty. The pattern is illustrated in this delineator. So clearly she wanted to know about what color would look good for her coloring. So there we go. Here we have some advertisements. Um, so for human hair, there was quite the trade in human hair um, back in the day. There actually still is quite the trade in human hair. Um, I'm not 100% sure how I feel about that because I feel lots of times um, people sold their hair because they didn't have any other options when it came to um, needing money. And that kind of makes my heart sad. So anyways, we have some advertisements here um, for all different kinds of things. Here we have one for wool. So this looks like it would be uh, knitting yarns. So wool, cruel, zephyr, Shetland wool, and floss, Saxony and German knitting yarn. So maybe knitting and embroidery yarns. Um, um, here is how to shop economically at the lowest prices, oh, excuse me, the lowest New York prices by shopping by mail from substantial dry goods. Or maybe they're just saying our stock contains everything in substantial dry goods and it's E. Ridley and Sons is the company. Here you can get the semi-annual report Boys Fashions, which is another publication by the Butterick Publishing Company. Here you can purchase an, purchase an accurate watch. Um, here's well some porcelain, white and decorated. The Santa Claus combination, that's fun. A song book. Free samples of silverware. The Hercules supporting corset, depending on materials, it is either two or three dollars. Apparently this is a new and improved abdominal corset is so constructed as to give a natural and permanent support to the abdomen. It cannot stretch, break, or lose its shape, avoids all pressure on the chest, and imparts an elegant and graceful appearance to the wearer. For sale by all, uh, all first class dealers in the U.S., or samples sent by mail on receipt of price by Lewis Scheel and Company. 
and it is at 388 Broadway in New York. Here's an advertisement for the uh, Heberlein Shearing and Gathering Machine. Boy, would that make making ruffles so easy. Oh my gosh. I do have a ruffle attachment for my, um, my treadle, but still, that would be amazing. Here we have a face powder, uh, another Lisbon wig. So it's already styled for you and you can order it in various lengths. And it is apparently the best French hair as opposed to English hair or American hair or German hair. Okay. Um, here we have an ad for chemists. You can buy a violin. Instructions on how to select your patterns. Shears, tape measures, another ad for the delineator. Here we have uh, an ad so that you can teach yourself penmanship. I feel like I probably need that. <laughs> Just saying. So I guess this is the before and this is the after down here. And it is, you will order it from Professor George A. Caskill. I have, oh, Gaskell. I have to wonder if he actually, well, it says he is the proprietor of business colleges at Jersey City, but sometimes I do have to wonder. Here we have a few more ads for fashion plates, a Metro Metropolitan Catalog of Fashion. These are all different publications from the Butterick Company. And last but not least, we have one last ad for the delineator on the back of the magazine. All right, so that's it for this month's flip through of the Delineator magazine. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. I really, really love to look through these. these. I, I think they're a, an interesting part of history, um, an interesting kind of little view into the world that they lived in. So with that, I am going to say goodbye. I have some work to do on the bodice. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. Um, if you did enjoy today's video, I would love if you would hit that like button down below. And if you would like to see more of this kind of content as well as sewing vlogs and the occasional look at some extant garments, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button. And next to that button is a little bell. If you ring that little bell icon, YouTube should maybe if it feels like it, notify you of any of my uploads. So with that, I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are, and I will see you next time. Bye!